Hello everybody, welcome back to the Ministry of the Woman at the Well. Hey, this is part two of the arrival of Antichrist and the Exodus, the going out, talking about the tribulation. Just to recap, uh, in our previous study, we talked about Revelation 2 and 3, the seven churches. If you missed that, I really encourage you to go back and listen to it because it shows the spirit of the church and how five out of seven churches of the body of Christ are not pleasing God. The majority of Christians will not be pleasing God and are not pleasing God. This is current. This is in our day. Just because they're named, what they're named in Revelation 2 and 3, and those were churches that were existing at the time that John wrote Revelations through the Holy Spirit and being taken up to the Lord's Day does not mean it doesn't apply today. It truly does because all Christians fit into these seven churches somehow, some way. So, with that being said, let's get on with what we're going to talk about today. And that is how the plagues of Exodus mirror what goes on in the tribulation and revelations. Because are you spiritually ready for this? That's the question. Do you say that your Lord is delayed in coming? Do you believe in the rapture before the tribulation? And if you're wrong, are you ready? Because I can promise you it's not in God's word. Jesus does not collect his elect and return until the seventh trumpet. Jesus does not come in secret and then return again at the seventh trumpet. There's not two comings of Christ. I've heard that. I've heard there's two comings. It's not biblical. Jesus isn't coming back twice. He's not coming back in secret. He says, I'm not in the secret chambers. I'm not out in the desert. Don't believe him. God says in, um, I believe it is Isaiah or Ezekiel. I'll have to look up the scriptures. But he says, you know, he's against those who put tie kerchiefs over his outreaching hands and teach his children to fly to save their souls. I will get you that scripture up here. That is what he tells them. You're not going to fly to save your soul. You're, if you're alive, you're going to go through the tribulation. God is going to collect a remnant that will pass away. But those that are alive and are on this earth during the tribulation, it is destiny. They're going to be here. The church is not going anywhere. Especially when five-sevenths of the church don't please God. They're misled. They've either forgotten their first love, which is Jesus Christ, and that's mercy, kindness. They speak hard, hardness, the law. These are legal Christians. Legalistic. They don't teach grace. So if you don't live by grace you fall by, you fall by the law and you fall from grace that's a very stern warning are you a hardened heart christian are you out fishing for men are you out spreading the love of god or the hatred in your heart are you even criticizing others for sins that you've committed and been forgiven for are you condemning them? Or are you sending a message of love and the way to the truth and the light and forgiveness and mercy so that God can work with these people? Or are you hardening your heart like Pharaoh did? I'm sorry, I apologize if this is offending some Christians, but it has to be said. And it has to be said out of correction and love. Are you a Christian who is messing with 
paganism and Christianity? Are you mixing New Age and Christianity? Are you still hunting for Easter eggs? Are you still calling Passover, crucifixion and resurrection, Easter? Are you doing any of the things that was warned about in the previous study of the five of the seven churches that were not pleasing to God? Are you falling into that spiritual deception? It's a big question. It's a really big question. And it has to be asked. When five-sevenths of the church does not please God, and you've only got two churches that do, and one is going to even be martyred for some of them, doesn't say how many. He doesn't say the majority or few. He says some of you. Some of you. Are you ready? Are you ready for what's about to come upon the earth? Look, we have artificial life being given to robots. They're being computer programmed with the human mimic of the human brain. They look human. They have very real skin, eyes. Look, this is scientific reality. We have, I assure you, cloning going on. It's going to bring God down. When, when people mess with God's creation and try to play God, it brings God down. It will bring the judgment because there's going to be soulless beings, demonics like you've never seen ever on the earth. It's basically the hell is going to open up on earth. And it is a spiritual war and a literal war at that time. But those that die by, live by the sword will die by the sword. So if you kill a human being in that time, and it's not because you're doing the will of God and defending yourself, or are you listening to God and going to where he tells you and doing what he tells you so he can defend you? You know, it's really a big question. Are you ready for that? Are you ready for the most fearful sights upon earth to happen and men's hearts fail them for fear? Are you ready for that? Because it's coming. I can't tell you a date and I won't tell you a date. I don't set dates because I know who is in charge of times and it is God and it's his clock and it's his timing. But I know the season. I see what's going on in the world. I've even had Christians tell me that they can have both new age and Jesus Christ. No, you can't. Jesus said so. You cannot have both. I've had Christians tell me that they don't read their Bible and they don't believe the Bible. And, but they claim to be believers of Jesus Christ. Well then, how do they know instruction? If they don't believe the Gospels, just because there's some errors in there, and some of them probably on purpose, or just mistranslations, I don't know. I find it very interesting that the word Easter appears in there, and it is total pagan. So I, I don't believe that an honest scribe did that, but do you throw the baby out with the bathwater? Because the bathwater got dirty when you washed the baby? No, that's that's insane. You love the baby. You don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater just because you washed the baby and it was dirty. That's crazy. God gives you the tools to read the truth. The Strong's, E-Sword, Blue Letter Bible. Hey, even if you're physically blind, and I'm not talking about spiritual, I'm talking about physically blind or handicapped, there, is, there are audio Bibles. Bible Gateway has an awesome audio Bible. 
you can listen to the Bible. Believe me, the truth is out there. Do you want to seek it? Like it, just like if you were lost a $50,000 coin that was precious or stone that was precious, would you, would you dig for the truth like you would dig through your house for that coin or that money or that jewel? Because the word is the Holy Spirit enacted. That's how it works. And I'm sorry if I feel like or sound like I'm getting kind of gruff sometimes, but it's, it's a sense of urgency. God calls on the watchman to do something. And if he doesn't or she doesn't, then the blood of those that were meant to hear or see is on their hands. And I don't want any blood on my hands. Look, I can tell you, Satan is wearing out the saints already. He is doing everything he can to attack God's people, especially those that know the truth. I can tell you that I've been under spiritual attack for a long time, <laughs> and it increased the more I did the will of God. Now, many say, oh, you go through this if you're sinning, if you're doing, hey, we all sin. We all sin. Do you repent? That's the question. Do you ask God to change your heart? Do you ask God to do his will in your life? Do you ask God to give you submission? Do you ask God for the Holy Spirit? Do you pray for things that you don't even know to pray for? Do you ask God to please do that? Do you pray in the Holy Spirit? Because I'm going to tell you, just because Satan comes against you, it doesn't always mean it's because of sin. Those that are doing God's work are going to be attacked the most. Those that have a message for God are going to be attacked the most because Satan doesn't want that message out. And he wants that blood on your hands. So please, don't shoot the messengers. Don't condemn them. Look, people make mistakes. People get things mixed up. They say one word when they mean another. We are not perfect. But you have to learn to discern a spirit. You have to learn, and if you, you don't have the ability to know that through the Holy Spirit, which is enacted by the Word of God in prayer, and the Word is your sword, would you go out into the, a war with no weapon? Because you're in the war whether you want to be or not. You better pick up your weapon, your sword, and that is the word of God. That is how you defeat this enemy, is prayer and the word of God. And the word of God gives you wisdom, it gives you insight. But you know what? There is a spirit that stops people from wanting to read the word. It gives them all kinds of reasons. I can even quote honest pure gold scripture to someone and they'll say that claims to be a Christian and they will say I don't believe that I don't believe that God said that I don't believe that God said you can't have both new age and look, they're ripe for the picking you don't want to be in that boat I'm just saying so okay let's dig in here because I've already spent 14 minutes giving a warning, so <laughs> I know that many want to hear the truth here. So let's talk about this. Let's talk about um, Revelations. Excuse me, sorry about that. Let's talk about Revelations versus uh, the plagues in Egypt. All right, let's get down to the nitty gritty here. In Exodus 7 through 12, we have all the plagues that occurred. Now, where it begins that there is a similarity is in 
God calling up Moses and Aaron to be the two witnesses. Now, there will be two witnesses in the end times. Now, it's not to say that they will be Moses and Aaron. But there will be two witnesses at that time. Many speculate who it is. But it's not written who it is. So, let's just skip that whole subject of who are the two witnesses because it'll be who God ordains it to be, okay? They may not even know who they are. It could be Mo Moses and Elijah, the lawgiver and the prophets. I don't know. I really don't, and I don't claim to know because God doesn't tell us who it is. But we will know who they are when they appear, those that know truth, but the rest of the world will hate them. So, if you're all worried about people-pleasing, and you want to please God, good luck to you. Because you can't do both. You can't please people and please God. Either you're a pe man pleaser or you're a God pleaser. So, let's just get on with it. Because what is, 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 the truth is the truth. And sometimes the truth hurts. Sometimes it does. But sometimes it's necessary for correction. Because God uses his rod and his staff. And that's his word too. But he will correct those that he loves. So, if you pray that you're pleasing God, and you want to follow Jesus, and you want to do God's will in your life, sometimes he gives you the rod of correction. Just like a parent would spank a child that they truly love. And they ran out in the street and was doing all kinds of things to get hurt. And they don't listen after being told multiple times, you know, sometimes you have to give that child just a little swift spot on the rear. You know? We don't like to say that that's what you do all the time. You don't swat a child for everything, but there's times when it's needed. And that child is totally out of line. You know? Sometimes that's the only way to get through. And it's not out of anger. It should never be out of anger. Sometimes it is with parents because they're human. They get angry. They get frustrated. But God doesn't. I mean, he, he his is all sovereign. If he's angry, it's sovereign. It's righteous. So it's not out of human emotions. But God does have emotions. So anyway, I don't know who that was for, but it was for somebody, I guess. Let's talk about Exodus 7 through 12. These are the seven plagues because God gave Moses and Aaron an instruction to go before Pharaoh, which is going to be just like the two witnesses going in Jerusalem, standing in the street and preaching against the Antichrist, which is Satan de facto here in person. He's not born to a woman. He will rise up. Many will, you, you, you may see his coming, but you won't know it's him. He may ride in very um, inconspicuously, but eventually you will be seeing him either through technology or face to face. Um, the two witnesses, which were Aaron and Moses, God instructed Moses and Aaron to go before Pharaoh and to say to set my people, let my people go. Because God wanted them to be freed from the captivity that they were in for hundreds of years. Where he had not even spoken to them. He was silent out of correction to the to them. He let enough generations pass to where the lies and the falsehoods would be not even taught. They, they were just waiting to hear from God because they'd been so oppressed by the Egyptians. So, God told Aaron and Moses to throw their rods down and they turned into serpents. And of course, Pharaoh had his little magicians and they threw theirs down and, and they turned into serpents. But then the difference was that Moses's and Aaron's rods ate the serpents of the magicians of Pharaoh. And that still didn't move Pharaoh. But that was his warning before the plagues. So, 
then happened all that happened with the Israelites and after before the plagues okay before the plagues God told Moses to instruct the people to have a very the very first Passover which was the slaying of a lamb taking the blood putting it on the doorpost to protect all the households of the Israelites from the plagues it is going to be no different in the tribulation because we are to have our Passover lamb Jesus Christ our first love we are to be sealed with the seal of God in our forehead through him through his sacrifice through his truth through his word not Easter because that's pagan we talked about that earlier this is the Passover the most high Sabbath and after that which is similar which is the sim similarity of the seal of God in their for in our foreheads in Revelation 7 the blood of the lamb should be on you in you you should be partaking with Jesus Christ you, he should be your first love you should know his truth and God will seal the servants of God with his seal in their forehead which is your mind it's your mind it's your brain it's your spirit what controls your spiritual and bodily functions is in the brain there's a part of the brain that totally is part of the spirit so that's why we don't even use a tenth of our brains nine tenths of the brain is just kind of dormant it's not even used so could you imagine what's available when God puts the Holy Spirit on you what you can do through him or what can you imagine what it's like when nine tenths of the brain is controlled by Satan by those that take the mark their spirit what they're capable of pretty bad supernatural the brain is equipped for supernatural abilities but it's not used in this dispensation this dimension but we're going into another dimension that's basically what's going to happen we're going to have an intergalactic spiritual crossover and a cosmic literal cosmic crossover in the dimension so we're going to start seeing supernatural people are not prepared for that that's how they believe the lies from Satan because hell is going to be basically opened up on earth so if you don't have the seal of God just like the Israelites if they didn't follow the instruction and put the blood on the lentils of the doorpost and protect their household and mark their households which was a represent representation of Jesus Christ then the plagues will come upon you it's the same thing so after that then God called down the plagues from Moses and the first plague in Exodus 7 verses 14 through 24 Moses was told to touch his rod to the water and he turned the water to blood all right we see in Revelations 8 verse 8 a third of the sea is turned to the blood turned to blood that is the judgment of God from the altar of the trumpets the trumpets the first trumpet is the beginning there's no trumpet sounded until the seal of God is in the forehead of his servants the truth the former and the latter rain is what's going to be coming you have the former rain and then you get the latter rain I believe it's in the third month all right so the first trumpet is hail fire mingled with blood okay that the blood is the judgment and it it scorches the earth it is going to be an asteroid or some kind of planetary body heavenly body touching the earth crashing into the earth because God uses natural means to perform his judgments 
just like Sodom and Gomorrah. That was obviously some kind of asteroids and meteorites destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. He uses a natural means. This is his creation. This is his creation. So, yes, he's going to use his creation to cast down his judgments and to make events happen on his creation of the earth. Hey, for all those that might be listening and you believe in evolution and you believe in just this is all just some happening that just happened by chance and life came from that, I got one question for you. Okay, let's just say hypothetically, I'll give you a second of my time for you to explain to me that if we just happened as, a, as life, where did, where did our spirits, our souls come from? Why are we not just soulless beings of microbes? There has to be a creator to give you a spirit, a soul. And I don't know one human that doesn't realize they have a soul. I mean, really, where do you think your heart comes from? Your feelings, your emotions. Why are you not a robot? Why are you not like some little microbe organism floating around? Animals even have spirits, souls. It's nefesh. Where did that come from? So if evolution is just a happenstance, where do you get your soul? There has to be a creator. Why would we all have different personalities? Why would we all have different hearts? That's your soul. You ever met a dark person? I'm gonna tell you something. You don't believe in the devil? Well, you know what? He is real. And I have personally done business with him. I have personally seen his hand of what he can do and what he causes man to do. He's real. It's in the word. God tells you about it. I believe it because it's God's word. And I believe it because I've seen his hand personally in my life. And I'll tell you what, if you're not equipped from God to handle that, you'll never recover. That's why hate is so, so damaging to carry around hate because when you hate as a human being with a soul, you become what you hate. It'll drive you mad. It'll cause you to do things that you should never do. And it is dangerous when Christians have hate in their heart because other people judge Christians by that. So, and it's not the truth. We are fishers of men. We are to, just because the garment is defiled, you are not to hate the soul. Unless it's purely from Satan, yes. It's our spiritual enemy. God has enemies and, and it's, it's Satan and his minions and their spirits. And believe me, their spirits are alive and well. And for all you Christians who think Satan's in hell, no, he's not. No, he's not. He's alive and well. He's being booted out of heaven. Heaven. And you think that's already happened? Nope. God says, look, woe to the earth. Look, he's spiritually here, but we have seen nothing yet. So he is here de facto in person. When the spirits of the damned are released upon the earth, and I'm not talking about humans that were alive and died. I'm talking about the actual spirits that control human beings that do not have God in their heart. I'm talking about the Geber, their souls, that were not from God, that were soulless, they were cannibals, evil. Their fathers were the fallen angels. They couldn't even return to heaven because they were not created, souls created by God. They were empty, demonic. 
entities that mixed with woman and gave birth and those giants were reserved for hell and their souls lie in the earth which is in the abyss and it's going to be opened up like a pit and it is a pit it's the pit of hell and hell is going to be opened up and unleashed on earth God has protected us from this since the beginning but it will not be protection anymore it won't be except for the Holy Spirit for those that have the seal of God in their foreheads the servants of God okay so the water gets turned to blood in Revelation 8 8 just as Moses turned the water to blood in Revelation 11 verse 6 the two witnesses have the power to turn water into blood just like Moses did hmm it is a good cause right there to believe it might be Moses I don't know or the spirit of Moses who knows I, I really the spirit of Elijah I, I don't know I just know that there will be two beings whether they are sent here by God or they are risen up from two believers I don't know I don't claim to know and in Revelation 16 3 to 4 the sea the rivers and the springs turn to blood okay so there's your parallel now the difference is in Revelation 8, you're talking about the trumpets. That is the actions. That is the beginning. That is when things start moving and happening. And it's on. But the vials and the plagues are called down by the two witnesses. And these are the judgments of God. And this is after man takes the mark. Okay, the trumpets happen simultaneously at times with the plagues. But it starts with the trumpets which is the call to war. And when the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth trumpets happen, no man has taken the mark yet because Satan doesn't even arrive until the fifth trumpet. Don't believe anyone who tells you these trumpets have sounded and been sounding because they haven't. There's just been examples. We haven't seen this yet. It has not come upon the earth yet. I know I studied under men that were great Bible study Bible teachers but I can tell you none are perfect and when it comes to the tribulation you haven't seen one trumpet sound you will know all will know okay so the first trumpet is hail and fire mingled with blood In Revelation 8 it burns up the green grass it is a literal and spiritual thing it's not one or the other it's both it's both then the second trumpet is an asteroid a planetary body the size of a mountain that hits the sea and a third of the life in the sea die this is going to affect the earth too you can't have a planetary body hit the ocean the size of a mountain and not cause a tsunami or things other things on the earth then the third trumpet is wormwood wormwood and it is a capital w it's not just the description of gall poison toxin it is going to be an actual thing it is a noun it is capitalized and I can tell you that it is a planetary body that is so big it will block out a third of the sun and the moon and the stars. The earth is going to be shaken. Something is changing in the cosmos. Something will come upon our solar system. More than likely this is a solar system entering into our solar system. So, the fifth trumpet is when Satan shows up, the darkness. And before the dark, before death, which is the devil himself, before that is always the darkness. The darkness comes before the death. 
all right? So let's move on. Just remember, the trumpets are the actions, the happenings. The vials are the plagues. The seals are what's contained at that time period. Just look at the seals as a time period. Things will happen in the seals simultaneously with the trumpets and the vials. You know, Christ already opened the seals. He opened the seals. And John told you he opened the seals. So they are knowledge. It's knowledge. Things will happen within those seals, but it will correlate to the trumpets and the vials. And the seals are not necessarily in chronological order. I truly believe in all my studies that I've done, it starts with the fifth seal, goes up to the fourth, the third, the two, then the first, which is the false Christ. That is not Jesus Christ in that first seal. That is a fake. It tells you he has a fake bow. It's Hoxon. It's fake. He's a fake. Then comes the sixth and the seventh seals. So, the sixth and the seventh seals, man, it's on. That's Jesus Christ. I mean, he's coming with his wrath. Satan is here in the sixth seal. Satan stands up and claims to be God in the sixth seal, the sixth trump, trumpet, and the sixth vial. That is when Armageddon, Jesus Christ, returns. After he stands there and does that, that is the final straw with God. And then Christ returns in the seventh seal, the seventh trumpet, which is the last trumpet, and the seventh vial. His number is 777, and Satan's number is 666. God doesn't play around. He gives you truth. He shows it to you. Count the number of the beast. You know what that word means? Count. It's just like a ballot. It's voting. But here's the thing. They used to vote with stones. That's how they cast their ballot, was with stones. Little pebbles. Well, over time, the people get worn down. And this is what the word count means. Worn down. People just give up. People just don't even bother standing up for what they believe. They just go with the flow. Hey, we're already there. So we're ripe and ready. And he won't be brought in by an election. Okay? That's how you count the number of the beast. You count it. Because David had five smooth stones and he slung one, just one at the giant. Those other four stones are reserved for, for the people of God. And you can slay this giant in your life, this spiritual giant, if you listen to God. If you heed his word, you have to. You have to listen. Please listen to the truth. Okay, so let's get back into the plagues of Egypt and the vials, which are the judgment. All right, the second plague in Exodus, which was Exodus 7, verse 25, through chapter 8, verse 11, there were uh, frogs. All right, where we see this sim similarity is in Revelation 16, verse 13. And there were three unclean spirits like frogs that came out of the mouth of the false prophet. So we can see here that there is a spiritual connection. They were literal frogs in the judgment of God upon Pharaoh and the Egyptians. But we clearly can see where the three unclean spirits come out are f like frogs. It says like frogs. All right. Let's look what frogs means in the Greek.
means literally a frog. It's called batrak in the Greek. So frogs do have a symbolism and it's of unclean spirit. So we also have to look at what God's message is with these frogs. But I can guarantee you that these are unclean spirits. And it comes out of the mouth of the dragon. Who's the dragon? We know who the dragon is. That is Satan. Jesus told you in his word, he looked like the lamb slain, but he has the voice of a dragon. That's why Jesus says, my sheep know my voice. Do you know Jesus's voice? The difference? I suggest you find out. And then one came out of the mouth of the beast and one out of the mouth of the false prophet. So you're going to be hearing lies. I mean, this is lies. Lies from the pit of hell are these frogs. Okay, then in Exodus 8, verses 12 through 15 and 15 through 28, you see gnats and flies. Now, there is no mention of the plague of gnats in Revelation or the plague of flies. However, Satan is the Lord of flies. He is the king of the dung hell. All right, so can you just imagine spiritually what these gnats and flies are going to do they're going to be around the dung so it's a spiritual thing so just because there's no mention of it in the vials hey you have literal spiritual caca in front of you <laughs> at that time and if you think there's not going to be gnats flies of a spiritual nature around that. I don't think we need any further discussion on it. It's going to happen. So. <laughs> it's just, un it's hard to just imagine spiritually what's going to be going on. And, and it's going to be turned to reality. So. It's not just going to be spiritual in the heart and the mind. It's going to be the real thing going to be like hell opened on earth and if you don't have the protection of God Lord I don't know what to tell you at that time I really don't because you're going to be so deceived you're going to be so fearful you're not going to know what you're going to be shaken like a mighty wind spiritually and physically okay and we have in the fifth vial pestilence which is livestock disease, and that's in Exodus 9, 1 through 7. Now, there is no mention of pestilence, plagues in Revelation, but we do see that things happen in, on the earth that will affect life, plant life, animal life. So, just because it's not mentioned as a separate plague, it will still be going on. So then we go to the sixth plague, which is the boils in Exodus 9, verses 8 through 12. And these are terrible, ugly sores that happen and are called down by the two witnesses in Revelation 16, verse 2 and verse 11. Then the seventh vial, or seventh plague of Exodus is hail and lightning in Exodus 9, 13, verses through verses 35. And there is hail and fire mingled with blood in Revelation 8, which is the first trumpet. And then you're also going to see hailstones come down. And this is going to be like meteorites. Huge rocks. Space rocks, if you want to call them that. They're going to come from heaven. It's going to just look at the damage that hail does when we have a hail storm of just ball, little balls of ice. Can you just imagine what it's going to be like? When it starts raining rocks, 
that weigh some way 150 talons or whatever I don't know it's, it's in Ezekiel 38 and 39 and we will discuss Ezekiel 38 and 39 because it's going to be a very interesting sight to see if you're here because that's how God's going to destroy the enemies is Gog and Magog the war of Gog and Magog and then that happens right before the war of Armageddon I mean, a lot going on and these people that are hit with the boils and and sores you know they even curse God and it's called on by the two witnesses just like Moses and Aaron but the hail and the lightning you see this with hail um, stones it talks about it in Revelation 16 verse 21 then in the eighth plague you have the locust which was Exodus 10 verses 1 through 20 well we have the locust army we have these evil evil dark spiritual scorpions locusts Revelation 9 verse 3 through 11 and then in the ninth vial, the ninth plague of Exodus 10 and Revelation 8 and Revelation 16. You have darkness in Revelation 8 over one third of the earth, of the sky, the stars, the moon, the sun, darkened. This darkness will come upon the earth. And remember, there's always darkness before there's death. And the kingdom of the beast will be plunged into darkness in Revelation 16.10. We will go through more of this in a further study. But for now, I want to make sure that we understand the parallels. And then, of course, the tenth plague in Exodus was the death of the firstborn by the destroying angel. Well, that was the death angel. And, and they, the Israelites were protected, who were under grace, by the way. There was no law given until after they were in the wilderness and they really made a mess of themselves out there they even saw the miracles in the hand of God and they still fell still murmured still complained instead of realizing that God was going to take care of all their needs and having faith so you can realize that just as it was in the Israelites in the wilderness you're going to see that with the <laughs> so-called you know believers ones that are in the wilderness together you know, God's going to separate the goats from the sheep. So, people will start failing their faith. The earth will open up and swallow some that are coming against God's people that are out in the wilderness doing His will and then being protected. <laughs> So, then we have the 10th plague, which is also the 10th vial in Revelation. We have the death of the firstborn by the destroying angel, which is the death, which is Satan, the death angel. Exodus 11 and, verse, and chapter 12, 29 through 30, verses 30. And then we have a death of one third of the human race by the four angels of death that come out of the Euphrates in Revelation 9, 13 through 19. They slay one third of man. That is a, big, a huge war. These are spiritual entities that come up from the Euphrates. Now, what's in the Euphrates? Euphrates is the river that um, divides up, I believe, Iraq and Iran. And a lot happened there historically in the Bible. So we're going to talk about war. So it's going to affect one third of mankind it's not just going to be in that little middle eastern you know is that nuclear war i don't know it talks about it in isaiah so it sounds like a nuclear war to me so let's just remember that we're going into a spiritual crossover of dimensions you have cern who i've talked about before who is, you know, messing around with something very dangerous 
They're trying to open up a wormhole. They're trying to deal with antimatter, dark matter. Look, talk about the dark angel, whatever. I mean, there is actually people doing, even ignorantly, meaning well, they could think that they're looking for a new source of energy to supply to the earth. They could think that they're really helping mankind. You know, the grunt workers, even the scientists may not realize what they're doing. But in overall totality, there is something, somebody evil and evil beings. And it's a spiritual that is really using this for an evil cause. And you could sit down and probably even talk to these scientists or workers that work there or are doing this work. And they're not going to buy what you say at all because they're like blinded. But you have to realize God lets it happen so that his word comes to pass and that everything is as it is written. So, you know, some are under God's will and they're not God's people. God's just allowing it to happen so that his word will come forth so that we will have the return of Jesus Christ. And, and he will rule for a thousand years with truth. It's going to be like Jesus Christ Truth Boot Camp. All souls are going to hear it. All, every knee shall bow at the return of Jesus Christ. And that is not until the seventh trumpet. Hey, I got a question. For those that believe we're going to fly out of here. spiritually fly out of here physically and spiritually just leave and disappear by a secret coming of our Lord that is not biblical but let's just hypothetically give you an open door here what if you're wrong and I can pretty much assure you by the word of God you are but for those that are just sealed in their head that you're not going to be here if you're alive you know you don't know when God's going to call you home and you pass away in this life that's a whole different subject just disappear body and all just like Jesus Christ um, you're just going to vaporize okay you think that's going to happen before the pre-tribulation what if you're wrong what are you going to do if you are here and this happens? And I'm telling you, I, I really believe that we are getting close. Because I can tell by the, hum, the events of humanity more than anything. What is going on in humanity? People creating their own human constructs of life. That has no soul like jesus said you know this is what they do in the green it's evil in the green can you imagine what it's like in the dry he's talking about souls he's talking about bodies so when you have a soulless creation what invades that darkness satan puts his will in there it's not a soul from god and i can tell you when we get into looking at the events of the world and what is going on scientifically and all that i'm telling you we're getting at the door here and then when you look at what is going on in the suns and the, the moon and the stars and what all that god tells you is happening there and what to look for hey are you too busy looking at Facebook to even know the signs? Because Satan uses all these things of technology and life to keep us so busy and wrapped up chasing our own tail and twist us like a pretzel so we can't even see the forest for the trees. We can't even see what's in front of us. If our nose is stuck in Facebook 10 hours a day or every two, three minutes to answer this or see that, how do you have time for God? Please heed this. I know there's many that are blinded, but God has not given up yet on your soul 
to implant his seal if you want to hear the truth. If there was a pre-tribulation rapture, what's the point of sealing the souls of the servants of God in their foreheads before one trumpet sounds if nobody's going to be here from the church? There's scripture after scripture after scripture that proves that Christians are here in the tribulation. Even in Revelation, it says these are the souls that came out of the great tribulation. They were martyred. You've got to realize that he was taken to the Lord's day. So you've got to look at the time period of he's speaking about in Revelation. And I'm sorry if I sound alarmed, but this is disturbing to me that this deception has come over five-sevenths of Christians and then the two-sevenths that speak out just get attacked from all sides and even other Christians. And where is the love of God in so many Christians today? They wax cold. I can't tell you what I have endured from fellow brethren. It's like, where did, where did your heart go? Look what you just did and said to me, but then you turn around and say something that completely didn't even happen? You cheated me? But then you also slander me because you cheated me. You don't want anybody else to know you cheated me. This is what's going on in the hearts of people today. And this is even in the church. It's a lot in the church. It's sad. It's alarming to me. It's heartbreaking to me. I understand how Elijah felt. I'm not saying I'm Elijah. I'm not saying I have any of his powers because I don't. I'm just a believer. I'm just someone who God is using as his will. I don't even know if I'm going to be here in another hour or tomorrow. I don't take life for granted like that. But I'm going to tell you something. Something is happening in my face, in your face. Are you paying attention? Have you repented for how you've hurt other people? Because I don't care if you're a Christian or not. You've hurt people. Either with your mouth, your actions, your deeds, whatever. Shame on us. What is happening? How can you kick one of God's little lambs when they're down? Do you do that? Do you kick a little wounded lamb? And then turn around and make excuses for why you kicked it? And then go off limping like you're the wounded lamb? Come on. I'm asking you to search your hearts for the truth. The truth about yourself. Remove the veil of your own face, of your own spirit. Remove it. I'm going to tell you, God pulled mine back behind the mask. And boy, was it scary to know that I had to have a heart transplant from God. I had to ask for his heart. So that my heart was not hardened like Pharaoh's. So my heart was not hardened for the Antichrist and evil and Satan to evade into my heart and take away the light and love that God has put in me. I have been through these spiritual battles. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I have no idea. And I'm not going to sit here and play the martyr because I am not a victim. I am not just a survivor. I am an overcomer in Jesus Christ. For everything that has been done, I pray for those that have injured me. That said they loved me, betrayed me. Hey, human beings betray. If they did it to Jesus, they're going to do it to you. Judas even gave him the kiss of death. You think there's not someone that you love that's not willing to be twisted in their heart and led by Satan to give you the kiss of death? To deliver you up to death? To kick you when you're down? To take you to your own beating? Your own lynch mob? It can happen. And it has happened. Many times over. To many good people. They have 
targets on their back from the devil. So yeah, I'm gonna tell you, I've seen his work, I've seen his hand, and I've personally had to do business with him to overcome. God bless, I hope this reached somebody. I don't care if it just reaches one person. I don't look at how many people listen to me. I don't look at, oh, am I popular? Am I getting all this? No, you know what? Because if this is just designed for one person and they heard it, then my job's done. I did what God asked me to do, even if it was just one person. This is not about me. This is not about my reputation or my arrogance or my popularity, okay? I don't care if I just reach one. If I reach one, I know I'm done. I know I did what I was supposed to do. Well, God bless. We will continue more on this. And uh, happy resurrection Passover is coming. And that's also going to be the time that this all happens in. It's no coincidence. So God bless. Look up.